Hi friends, welcome to Even Python series. In this video, we're going to talk about how to render images from a folder in automated reports using Python Docs TPL. And in this video, we're also going to address the issue of images with large widths getting cropped in the output documents. You know, I've already created a video and blog post on using Docs TPL Python library for creating automated reports as Word or PDF files from Word file templates. If you don't know what Docs TPL is, or if you don't know how to use docs tpl i highly recommend you to watch this video where i have shown the basics of using docs tpl along with practical examples i will leave the link of this video in the description for this video one of our viewer made a comment requesting how to render all the images in a folder in the docs tpl automated report so this is the motivation for creating this video actually so let's go ahead and see the setup for solving this problem so i have taken a blank folder and in that blank folder i have created a blank folder called reports the outputs will be generated in this reports folder and in this blank folder i have also got a folder called images i have just copy pasted a set of images which i want to be rendered in the reports and this is the docs tpl template word file we will go through this document later after creating the python file first so let's go ahead and open this folder in visual studio code in visual studio code i'm going to create a new file i'll just name it index.py so first from docs tpl module i will import the classes docs template and inline image first create a document object from the template so i'll just create a variable called doc equal to docs template of and here you got to give the path of the template word file so this is the template word file located in the same folder of the index.py so just copy this file name and write it here if you have a file located in some other folder you have to be absolute file path something like c users so on all right now we have the document object ready so before creating a list of images i'm just creating a list of python objects and i'm creating some 10 random python objects and appending to this list called sales table rows so this sales table rows is a python list object in which each object is something like this so i have 10 objects in this sales table rows and this 10 object will become 10 rows of the table which you are going to render i am rendering a table with text rows also to prove that rendering images is the same as rendering text in docs tpl all right now let's create the image objects so i'll just create a new list object i'll just name it image objects and initialize it as an empty array now what we have to do is we have to iterate through each image name in this images folder so for that you need to use the glob module in python so if you don't know what glob module is or if you don't know the basics of using glob module i have already created a video with practical examples on using glob module to iterate the file names in a folder you can go check out that video i will leave the link of that video in the description for now let's try to import the glob module and use it i'll just write import glob here i'll add a for loop so I'll write for file path in glob dot glob. Here you should write the folder path. I'm writing the folder path as images slash star. So what I'm telling is in the images folder, iterate through each file name and in each iteration, the file name will be assigned to the variable called f path. So this is how you write a for loop iterating through each file in a folder. Or if you want to iterate through only PNG objects, you just write star dot PNG. That means this file path will be assigned to all PNG images and all other images will be neglected. So in my case, I have JPG, PNG and all images. So I'm just writing images slash star. In each iteration, F path will be assigned to each file name. And using that file name, I'm going to create an image object and append to this image objects list item. So first try to create an image object. So image object equal to inline image. Inline image first argument will be the document object. So the document object which you have created at the beginning doc and the path of the image. So the path of the image is f path so for each image you are getting f path set here so i'm creating image object for each image and then append this image object to this list so image objects dot append image object so what i'm doing is i'm iterating through each file in this images folder creating the image object out of it and appending it to the list called image objects so now i got the image objects list as this variable called image objects and that's it you just have to use a context and supply this to the context and render it to the document file so let's create a context object i'll just write context equal to it's a simple python object first let's write the sales table rows which is the table rows so I'll just write sales table rows, the name of the key and the value into the sales table rows, which is a list of Python objects. 
and then the image objects i'll just write a key called images and these image objects will be supplied to this images key in the context object in order to show the example of rendering a single object i'll just use the date time module and i'll render the today's date as a single string object so that we can render it in the report so i'll just write today's string equal to dt dot date time dot now and you're formatting that in a string like date month year so basically i'm getting the today's date as a string and i'll supply this to the context object i'll just create a key called report date string and i'll assign the today string to this report date string key so my context object has three values which is the images key which contains the list of image objects and the sales table rows which contains list of normal python objects which have key value pairs as text and the today's date as a report date string so these two are list of objects and this is just a single object now since i've got my context ready i have to just render this document with this context so let's write document dot render and here i'll write the context now let's save this document as a file so i'll just write document dot save and here you just write anything like reports slash report dot docs so i'm rendering the document and saving it as a file called report dot docs in the folder called reports so the output should come into this folder called reports so that's it guys so that's it guys i've iterated through each image object file name using this glob dot glob and using each file name i've created an image object and I have created a list of image objects and rendering them into the context of the document. That's all. This is how you can render list of images in a docs TPL template. All right. Now we got our code ready. Let's try to see the template first. So I have created this template called report template with images dot docs. So let's open this now. And here you can see I have rendered report date string. And here I am rendering the variable called sales table rows. And for each item which is a normal Python object. I'm taking each Python object attribute like item dot name, item dot cost per unit, item dot number of units, item dot revenue, and rendering that in a table. To use for loop in docs TPL, you have to use table. So that's why I've created a table and rendering each Python object in this table. The similar way, I have created a new table here. And in this table, I'm just rendering each image object using for loop. So let's try to create this table again. I'll just insert new table, table with just three rows. And in the first row, I'll just start the for loop. So the for loop will be bracket percentage tr per item in images. So images is the key name in the context object. I have to end the for loop. So I'll just write tr and for. In the body of for loop, I'll just render the image. So each image object is the item in this for loop. So I'll just write item. And I want to render the image in the middle of the page. So I'll just go to home and align it in the middle. So now I got a table which is rendering each image object as a table row. But if you want to create an illusion like you are rendering each image one below the other without a table, you just remove the borders of this table. So let's select this table, right click table properties, borders and shading, select none, ok. And the borders will be gone and when the images are rendered, it will look like you are just rendering the images without table. So the main thing here is, if you want to render a list of items, whether they are text, python objects or images, you have to use a for loop. And if you use a for loop, you have to use a table. That's why I've created a table and used a for loop and rendered the list of images. So let's try to delete this upper table so that I can have only one table. I'll just delete this table. And now we have a table where we are rendering each image in a table row. So let's try to save this template, close it and let's try to run this code. So let's run this code now and here you can see in the reports folder I got the report.docs because we have declared document.save reports slash report.docs so I got a report output called report.docs so let's try to open this folder and in the report.docs let's try to open how the output looks like we got each of the python object rendered as a table row and here you can see each image is rendered in this document one after the other but one thing you can notice is that this image width is too much that it is not fitting in this word file so if i just resize it to reduce it width then you can see the whole image so this problem occurs when you try to render big images with big width in documents so how can you tackle this problem actually this problem can be solved while creating the inline image object because inline image object takes a parameter called width and height in our case we will use the parameter called width width equal to and here you can mention the width of the image by default the width is none that means whatever the image width is it will be rendered but in our case i want to make the image width a particular number so i can mention the image width in inches so to do that you have to import the inches from docs module so i'll just write from docs.shade import inches so i can mention the inches using this inches class so here in the width instead of none i'll just write inches of 6 
So I'm using six inches because the standard A4 size paper width is 8.3 inches. So if I render six inches, it will fit nicely in this A4 size document word file. So let's try to close this report output. And with this change where we have fixed the image width, let's try to run this code again. You can see the code is run successfully. And let's try to reopen the report.docs output. And here you can see the image is rendered with 6 inches as a standard image width. So each image is rendered as 6 inches width. At the last image, you can see one more problem. The problem is that if the image has very less width and you mention the width as a bigger width, then the resolution of the image can go bad. So make sure that you have images with some minimum width so they can look good in the document or else you can perform checks like you can get to know the image width using Python and if the image width is less, you can avoid resizing the image and so on. And one more issue I'm seeing is that the images are just ticking one below the other. I just want to give a small gap after each image. So what I'll do is I'll go to the template and in this row while I'm rendering the item, after rendering the item, I'll also render a new row. So basically in this row, I'm rendering item and a new line also. So I'll just save this and close this and let me try to run this report again. And let me try to open the output reports report.docs. And here you can see after each image, I got one line space because while rendering, I am telling render the item and a new line also. So now you can see each image is spaced from other image. So if you want to render this report as PDF, you just have to use the docs to PDF module. So I'll just write from docs to PDF import convert. So I've imported the convert function from docs to PDF. So I'll just use this to convert this report as a PDF file. So I'll just write convert this file to something like the PDF file. So in order to avoid repetition, you just can cut this and create a variable called report file name equal to this and use this here. And you can also use that here report.fname dot replace dot docs with dot PDF. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm converting this report dot docs to report dot PDF. So I'll just save it and run this. And here you can see we got report dot PDF generated. So I'll just open this report dot PDF. So we can see report.pdf is just the PDF version of the word file which we have generated now. And that's it guys. Just by creating a list of image objects, you can render multiple images with for loop in DocsTPL automated reports. You can see I've created a blog post on rendering multiple images in automated reports using Python DocsTPL. I've also given you the source code so that you can copy paste and practice it for yourself. I've also given the links for official documentation for further reading. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching.